especially in America, it's more likely to actually do something, a la Europeans. Like, uh, when I first got here in 83, the Roxby Downs occupation was going on, and I found out about the people who chained themselves to equipment to stop a dam on the Franklin River in Tasmania. You know, I thought, what? This happens in Australia? Oh, yeah. And then it was here, it was a university, I don't think it was Monash, it might have been one of the others, because Dead Kennedy's played a couple of them. The student newspaper, instead of rah, rah, go football team, oh great, another fast food joint is opening on campus, and that's all they'd say. The entire thing was a concept issue attacking religion. Complete with an ad for Jesus breakfast cereals and other things. It was, it was mostly done with humor, which is important because uh, it's not all fun and games, of course. It's a lot of hard work and they don't call it struggle for nothing. But it shouldn't just be a grim, hard struggle of the proletariat against the, the big, bad, fascist pigs. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to have meetings, God damn it! No, I mean, I mean, there should be some celebration. There should be some fun. There should be some carnival entertainment. When we stopped the whole city after the first Bush launched the Gulf War, it was like Mardi Gras taking over all downtown. You couldn't get through Market Street. There were so many people. I mean, I rode my bicycle clear up onto the Bay Bridge and there was somebody I knew in high school in Colorado. It was amazing. So, and, and that's why I think it's good, good to use humor with some of these things. Uh, humor in the actions at times. I mean, the mere photograph in the paper of people dressed as bears and animals being herded into police cars did wonders for Earth First, for example. It was just so surreal, people couldn't get it out of their minds. And, uh, yeah, there's been, there's been some good signs here. Uh, the one that's directly to the point is Milton Friedman was an evil cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know anybody here knew who he was, but uh, he did have one good thing. I only know of one. He was against the war on drugs for monetary reasons. But that may be the only way it's ever going to get stopped, is to appeal to whatever way you can get through to get more allies on some things. I mean, you're never going to get consensus with Tea Party bozos in America, but the two things that's good about some of them is they're against the war on drugs, because it's government intrusion, and they're against the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. They want America to be all isolated and us against the world, so the reasons are wrong, but sometimes you need every last ally you can find if you actually want to get the law changed. You know, which the slam people seem to have done very effectively here. Uh, you heard about music that. Music venue laws, yeah, yeah. Like one of them was at dinner earlier, so I heard quite right. a bit. So. Yeah, 30,000 on the streets, so um, we're, we're, we're a town that doesn't take um, autocracy well. So, would you, I'm just wondering, um, would you would you like to go on a camp tour, and we could perhaps take the computer with us, and we could, and um, just to, to okay. either meet some people. Are you comfortable with that, no or problem. would you prefer to? Um, I'm just, trying to think of there's anything else worth offering. Well, yeah. yeah. What would you? Um, what would? What message would you leave? Uh, well, Melbourne well, I, well, I, well I, I think number one, it never hurts to start thinking now about what the demands should be. The more basic and the more they can appeal to people who don't realize they're all already on our side, the better. But, um, you know, study the tax code or the basics. Does that need reforming? How This is an anti-corporate movement. The spirit of Seattle reborn. You know, 911 derailed it all over the world for entirely yeah. too long. But now it's back because things have gotten so much worse, people's backs are against the wall now. And I guess some things are not as bad here as they are in the United States, like the mortgage foreclosure crisis in America, which Obama could have nipped in the bud if he gave all that stimulus money to the homeowners who could then give the money to pay the banks, and the banks would get their money anyway. So they just gave it to the banks, no strings attached, and they took the money hostage, and they won't spend it on anything except executive bonuses unless they get more money. And some more laws changed in their favor. It's just insane. Crazy. But, in, but anyway, but I would say the important things were start formulating demands, and not just, say, education reform, but specifically what exactly needs to be done. And, and, and in America, for example, I was suggesting in my little speaking time 
okay, there's things that fall under the umbrella of what you're objecting to that are right on Obama's table, the congressional table right now that may get voted on within weeks to come out in, in, against. One of them would be the so-called free trade agreements. It was bad enough to do it to Mexico and South America, and the Bush administration got one ready to go with one with South Korea, Colombia, and Panama of all places. You know, Colombia, death squads kill union organizers to this day, kill indigenous people saying they're terrorists and drug runners when actually they want their land to put oil pipelines in. And we're backing them. And uh, Panama is one of the biggest money laundering countries in the world. That's why so many rickety ships that sink are registered there. And uh, South Korea, there's even a backdoor thing in there with free trade with South Korea that gives you free trade with North Korea. The reason being that South Korea has a sweatshop program where the North Koreans are paid 25 cents an hour instead of a South Korean worker's wage. And if something is 65% North Korean parts or something, but it's assembled in South Korea, that's okay. And under free trade, it all comes into America too, so in a way it's free trade with North Korea. In other words, fight those bills that hardly anybody knows exist, that corporate media isn't talking about, get it shot down. And like here, crazy methods to get coal and natural gas out of the ground. They're wider known here. It's going on where I am too. And now Obama, who has to sign off on it himself, he doesn't have to meet Congress, is apparently about to approve this huge pipeline from northern Alberta where they're getting oil out of what they call the tar sands, one of the most energy intent wasting, filthiest way to get oil there is and take it all, all the way down from Alberta, all the way down to the central United States across all these aquifers and water, rivers like the Missouri and the Platte that are drinking water for millions of people if the pipe breaks. And then the refinery is Port Arthur, Texas, which means it's not in the center of the country, it's in Texas, so all that oil is going to go somewhere else, like China or Australia, dare I say. So my advice there is like, okay, pick on this one, stop that goddamn pipe Line. You know, one climate scientist has already said if that thing goes through, it's game over forever trying to fix this. This is going to be so much more oil to discourage fossil fuel use. And as far as energy goes, I, I mean, um, part of what I think needs to be fought is that whole idea that not even a school system is worth having unless somebody can make a profit at it. And that's what's delaying using money, and I think this is a national security issue, because that's what Americans are all paranoid about, is national security, defense. Make it the defense budget to winterize everybody's houses so they don't burn up so much heating oil. Put solar panels on their houses for free. And if you're worried about economic refugees flooding in as immigrants, go fix those countries too, and do it for free. We could finish formatting it if you want, we just need another computer. Okay, we're just having an interview here. But <laughs> thank you so much, I mean, so generous with your time. One thing I'd like to ask you is, the Lord Mayor has uh, said that he wants to evict us. What message do you have for him? I guess my message would be more for the people here. Be really careful with this because nobody should get hurt and it should not get violent. Mass arrests are not necessarily a bad thing. When the whole Murdochoid media doesn't want to admit you exist, let alone that it's not just a bunch of people doing drum circles, but there's all kinds of other people here, then if you know when the eviction is coming or even a big protest of the eviction likely to draw the police where you can get older union leaders and you know, and the rank and file, no, regular people who think about and care about these issues just like we do, and let everybody get arrested. And then the corporate media can't ignore it anymore. Occupy Wall Street was blacked out until 700 people got arrested on the Brooklyn Bridge when the New York City cops got out of hand. It wasn't really a riot. It was probably closer to a police riot than a riot, but not even a really bad police riot. But mass arrests that shouldn't have happened, conflict, but as soon as you're 
hundreds arrested. Then, if it bleeds, it leads. Now we can talk about this movement on corporate McNews. And luckily, um, enough people from the movement or siding with the movement have gotten on there too that they haven't been able to totally sensationalize it except on Fox News so far. But, that, I mean, that's how the Tea Party first got attention, too, was crashing town hall meetings with congressmen, talking about Obama's health care bill and disrupting everything, and dressing as George Washington, waving flags, which I think the Occupy America movement should take back. And you should, instead of upside-down flags, tempting though they may be, use the same look. We're the real patriots. We care enough to fight the government when they won't enforce the law.